Anthony Sullivan here for the CBD Source Podcast. You've heard the rest, now listen to the best. Hey gang, this is Tasha from the CBD Source Podcast, and we're coming to Vegas, baby. and Cannabis Diet Chef Ryan Weber are attending MJ BizCon 2019. We'll be interviewing vendors, celebrities, and the general public while walking around the Las Vegas Convention Center from Wednesday, December 11th to Friday, December 13th. On Thursday, the boys will have a private booth in Podcast Row from 2.30 to 4 p.m., for a few prime interviews. If you're planning on attending MJ BizCon and would like to talk to the host of the CBD Source podcast and want to appear on an upcoming episode of the show, give us a call and let us know. 1-833-CBD-GAY. That's 1-833-223-4264. You can also let us know via email at cbdsourcepodcast at gmail.com and we'll CBD you there. Hey gang, I'm Carl Cheney and this is episode 36 of the CBD Source Podcast. Happy Hemp Day! You're listening to the CBD Source Podcast, your source for all things CBD. Coming up on the show, we've got an interview with... The former director of communications for the American Academy of Cannabinoid Medicine, the founder and director of the American Cannabis Compassion Alliance, founder of the Global Cannabinoid Research Center, cannabis journalist and blogger at mikesmedicines.com, Mike Robinson. You may remember him from episode 18 when we talked to him about, about his years of dealing with these crazy ailments. His, his a former race car driver crashed into a wall um, and how cannabinoids have changed his life. Well, he's back. He was just doing a lecture at CBD.io. Mike's here to talk about what he lectured about at CBD.io. CBD to drug interactions, positive and negative. Some interactions are very positive and some are negative. So we're going to break that down just in case you're on prescription drugs and you're worried about CBD interacting with it. Maybe we'll have some answers. When you hear this, we will be in Vegas, baby. That's right, while you're listening to this, or, you know, if you're listening to this far in the future, when this was going live, we were already on the floor in Vegas at the 2019 MJ BizCon, walking around, meeting all of you, gang, and uh, interviewing people, hearing their Weed Man Van stories, talking about people's products, and seeing what new innovations are out there in the field, so... We're so psyched about it. We're just getting everything ready for this trip right now. I know you're listening to us, you know, in the past, but we were we are getting ready, building up these swag bags that we're taking with us. I think we're gonna have 300 swag bags with buttons, candy, show swag, stuff like that. So if you run into us, make sure to grab a swag bag for the CBD Source podcast. So without further ado, let's kind of dive right into it. Let's give a warm CBD Source podcast welcome to our guest. Coming back to the show from Mike'sMedicines.com, Mike Robinson. Gang, you're listening to the CBD Source Podcast. Awesome to have you back, man. Uh, let me see. Last time we talked to you was episode 18. So that was a while ago, back in August. So good to have you back. I mean, we've got a lot of extra footage that we didn't use the first time that we'll parse out in other episodes but right now uh we, we you contacted me this time because you had a topic you want to talk about and i'm psyched to talk about it because this is something i want to know about a lot of, you know way more than i do about this so let's let's talk about it well there's so many topics you know, <laughs> you know i you know i'm literally um in my home office right now uh where i do a lot of work including some research um but i'm homesick and it's sort of different when you're homesick and your office is in your home, you right, know, because right. you're, you're still working, you know. But but you know what I ran across, and and I think I think this is what we're what, what we talked about was I've got the shingles, and and this is a really common thing. 
Mm -hmm. you know, getting the shingles. I mean, literally like 4 million diagnoses per year just in the United States. I mean, it's hard to run into somebody that's over 40 years old who hasn't had the shingles. And shingles are so interesting because it's literally the chicken pox coming back. Oh, wow. And we get the chicken pox when we're young and we think it goes away. Uh -huh. And literally it doesn't. Instead, it rests deep in the nerve root. Uh -huh. And the shingles rash isn't really the shingles itself. Actually, the, the virus is coming up from the nerve root uh -huh. up to the skin, you know. And, and that's where CBD comes into play, you know, because we're talking about an inflamed skin. We're talking about a nerve that's right. sending off a virus. So we've got a lot of research regarding how CBD works really well to handle nerve pain, uh, neuropathy, how it works very well to handle uh, skin irritations with topicals. Um, and, you know, I see all the time, um, you know, if somebody has shingles, the advice right away, give CBD. And, you know, I'm not going to go into the fact that we should ask people a lot more questions before we tell them just to start taking CBD. <laughs> um, right. One of the <laughs> One of the things that, that I do a lot of research on and actually just spoke on at, at CBDIO in, in Vegas uh, is on CBD to drug interactions and not just pharmaceuticals, but all different types of interactions. And, and it's not always negative. And, you know, the world has been reading all kinds of negativity about CBD based on GW Pharma's creation of Epidelex. Right. And it's. So we're reading about liver damage, uh, these side effects. That that has to do with the pharmaceutical creation. It has nothing really to do with the cannabinoid or very trace little amount to do with the cannabinoid. Right. That just so, came out like in the last couple of weeks. The FDA dropped this like, oh, scare tactic type of thing about like damaging the liver and all this stuff. Maybe you could help break that down a little later. Or Well, I can br actually break that down right now. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> because everybody, when they get the shingles, we're going back to my shingles, and where I have them is in a fun place. I mean, I got it on my chest. It went over to my nipple. Oh. I mean, that's some sensitive skin to have the shingles on. Oh, God, I'm telling yeah. you. So I call my doctor, like everybody does, and they get the shingles, uh, get some bowel tracts. You know, this is the drug given to people that have shingles. Uh -huh. And if you, you take it soon enough, it might do something. But most people know they take bowel tracts and they still have to ride the storm out. It doesn't really stop anything. Okay. You know, but CBD does that trick. It does a lot more. And, and when I start looking into research, so does THC actually is the more studied uh, cannabinoid when it comes to alleviating neuropathy and even shingles pain. Huh, okay. uh, but, but CBD is what's on the market. It's what's available to people. And immediately that advice is given to people that have the shingles. Hey, take some CBD. So I start looking into how does Valtrex metabolize? Because when it comes to CBD to drug interactions, it's not individual drugs we look at. We look at families of drugs, mm -hmm. okay? And when I looked at how Valtrex metabolized, I found out that it was a serious hog of metabolic enzymes. It wants, it wants to hog these pathways that, that allow things to metabolize. Ah. Well, so does CBD, Right. And, and what I found was that Valtrex and CBD don't just interact. They do what a lot of CBD to drug interactions do. They cancel each other out. Um. So the, the person takes Valtrex, they take CBD. The Valtrex is chewing up all kinds of digestive enzymes that are needed to digest the CBD. Mm -hmm. The CBD is chewing up all kinds of enzymes that's needed to digest the Valtrex. So the patient ends up with the side effects of using Valtrex, but no efficacy. The patient uh. ends up with the cost of using CBD, but no efficacy. So literally, a lot of CBD drug interactions are not negative things where the person goes, oh, I had an interaction. Oh, <laughs> and they're dying off. Right. It's, it's more of a cancellation where, where CBD can cancel the effects of the pharmaceutical drug. And that's where we get to these weird liver damage claims we see mm. made. Um, and there's a lot of it, and it's a little disturbing because people have been using CBD for years and nobody's came up liver damage, nobody's talking about this. Suddenly right. Big Pharma makes a product, they do clinical trials with their product, and now there's uh, hepatic liver failure, et cetera, warning 
on CBD, you know, and, right. and, and it's tied to the cannabinoid and it should not be. We already know that pharmaceutical drugs damage our livers. We already know that our enzyme counts go up in our liver based on the use of pharmaceutical drugs. You yeah, know? yeah. And, and so when you look at CBD to pharma interactions, some interactions are very dangerous to the liver. But is it CBD that's hurting the liver? No. It's CBD going in and hogging up those digestive enzymes. And right. then the pharmaceutical doesn't digest properly. And instead of taking a pathway out of our body, the pharmaceutical takes a pathway right back to the liver. And now you've got some, some problems going on in the liver. But is it due to the CBD? No. It's due to the pharmaceutical drug. So it's very hard for people to even take in what I'm saying and, and understand that. Um, but the point of all of this is, is that we as patients have to stop and consider some things. I mean, if I was ready to call my doctor and get valve treads, that means most everybody else would have just called and got it. Right. You know, so I didn't even bother having the discussion with the doctor over the possible interactions. I just didn't call her. Instead, what I did was call my pharmacist who knows quite a bit. And, you know, I, I'm telling people more and more by the day, check with your pharmacist regarding CBD to drug interactions. This is what they learn in school. Right. This is what they do all day long. Yeah. And, and the pharmacist, they, they're not in the position the doctor's in. The doctor runs a business. The pharmacist works for a business. That's a big difference, you know? Gang's all here. The CBD gang. Give the show a call at 1-833-223-4264. That's 1-833-CBD-GANG. CBDGang.com The official subreddit for fans of the CBD Source Podcast. Questions, answers, CBD gangsters, and karma. At sweet, sweet karma. The CBD Source Podcast resumes now. <laughs> nice plumes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is this a CBD mod? Yeah, it's uh, it actually is a nicotine mod that has CBD in it. Uh huh. Are there any other common things that uh, CBD might interact with that would like do the same thing that people might be n just canceling out the the money and the medication? Well, there are many things that CBD interacts with because of that that digestive. Uh, enzyme fight. I mean, when we look at, at at these metabolic paths that allow digestion of things that we inhale, things that we eat, everything needs a metabolic pathway. Everything needs digestive enzymes, even when we don't actually eat it. You know, mm -hmm. so these enzymes create metabolism, even of like, for example, smoke cannabis. So, so it's interesting that you ask that because. You know, I just made an announcement at the the Vape International show, which is sort of coupled with CBD uh, IO show mm -hmm. um, in the vape safety panel. And it's sort of interesting that I made the announcement that I was going to see that noise yeah. that I was going to quit vaping. And and actually, Anne Marie and I both were going to quit vaping nicotine um, as a New Year's resolution, just because we made that as a personal choice. You know, we mm -hmm. both looked at blood pressure. I got one of these pulse oximeter things, you know, where you can check your pulse and right. your blood oxygen level. Put it on your finger, and then you can put it on my. Yeah, do some vaping with that. Right. It's like suddenly my blood pressure is like 180 over 120. Uh -oh. That's not cool. You know, so this has CBD in it now. And, and I would be lying if I said I was completely not moody, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but it's doing a quite a bit for me. But, you know, you asked the question, are mm. there common things that CBD may interfere with? And, and I like saying interfere instead of contraindicate because the word contraindicate more means pharmaceutical to pharmaceutical, drug to drug. Mm. Do they not work together? Right. But, but what does CBD interfere with? Well, 
This Nicotine. is probably what this is what everyone wants to know because everyone who's been reading about it, it's like, what, like, is it going to affect my blood pressure medication? Is it going to affect, you know, like I have di- someone has diabetes, not me, but like my dad for has diabetes. It's like, is it going to affect that, like insulin or like who knows? This is the thing. Like you do know because you do all the research on this. So let's, I want to hear it. Let's hear, <laughs> let's hear okay, some I mean- of what you've learned. That's like you just said, diabetes, you know, so, so, I mean, certainly with diabetes could be taking a drug that does interact, contraindicate with CBD, and it could make that drug not work well, while CBD also modulates the pancreas's production and release of insulin. So now we have a double thing going on. Yeah, um, so weird. The CBD is interacting with the, with the diabetic drug, but doing the job of it at the same time. So. There's a lot of different interactions, but what I want to step back to is the question regarding common items because there's two very common items, and they are the number one and number two killers in the United States, and CBD interacts with both of those, one being nicotine. I made the statement that I was quitting nicotine, but yet I still have the vape in front of me. It's got CBD in it. Mm -hmm. The plan is to be completely done with nicotine by January 1st. There is a little bit of nicotine in this juice. With with the CBD? You have mixed it together? Most of it. Well, I put some nicotine juice in there, and then I put the the CBD juice on there. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, the question would be, Mike, why are you doing that? (laughs) Well, very simply uh, put, uh, CBD interrupts the metabolizing of multiple different drugs. So nicotine has multiple substrates. That means it's got multiple metabolites. So it moves from nicotine to several other different fancy words people aren't going to (laughs) understand. But these are all metabolites of nicotine. So if somebody takes a big drag off their nick juice. He's doing it right now. Okay. Okay. So if somebody does that with nicotine Uh and they're also ingesting CBD at the same time, guess what? They're going to use, they're going to use a boatload of nicotine. This is what Anne Marie and I both found, Genevieve's mom and I, Uh you know, we, we both found that we were, we were using just crazy amounts of nicotine juice. Uh And we also use like a hundred milligrams or so a day of CBD each. Uh-huh. So then I started looking at nicotine and CBD and the interaction. And the interaction is the same as it is with a lot of pharmaceuticals. It literally knocks out those metabolites. So the person goes and, and takes a drag off their cigarette, uh, takes a drag off their, their vape, that's nicotine, and they've got CBD in their system. Or in my case, I've got CBD right with it being mm. inhaled at the same time. So when I inhale... When I in- inhale this vapor that's got a little bit of nicotine and more CBD in it, mm-hmm. it's allowing my body to feel some nicotine, but immediately the CBD is just overriding it and kicking it out of the whole digestive process. Although huh. we're not digesting this, I-, I shouldn't really use the word digestive. I should use the word metabolic process because – Regardless of whether we inhale or whether we ingest, there's still a metabolic process involved in anything like that um, regarding the metabolism of it. A lot of people don't consider the fact when they're smoking a cigarette that nicotine metabolizes into different things in our body. But if you add CBD, it won't, which makes it much easier to quit. So if you're planning on quitting smoking cigarettes, start taking CBD now. Start using a couple drops, a few milligrams when you go out to have a cigarette. And guess what? You're probably going to want more cigarettes because the nicotine's going to fade away right, quickly. it's chopping it out quick. So, so you would think. But, you know, I made that statement right there on purpose so I could counter myself. <laughs> Harvard just came back and proved that heroin addicts literally have a 60% less likelihood to go back after heroin if they're using CBD because CBD curves the cravings. Yeah. So what am, I, what am I doing by adding a bunch of CBD to my nicotine? Number one, I'm knocking out the ability for nicotine to metabolize, so I can't – my addiction is fading away even though I'm still using it. Mm-hmm. And I'm also stopping my craving for it. So while I've diluted down this, this vape juice with CBD – What I've done is also started using less of it when you'd think I'd use more. So 
that's one item that we commonly see because it's in corner stores. And there's another item we commonly see that's in corner stores. And we're talking about the one and two killers in the United States, um, tobacco being one of them, alcohol definitely being the other one. So when it comes to alcohol and cannabinoid medicine, there are definite interactions. Anybody that's gone out and partied some and then smoked a joint knows that these two things don't mix well together. You get very dizzy. You feel like you want to get sick. Uh, THC and, and alcohol, just a horrible interaction for most people. <laughs> and did, almost automatic, you know, send them to the bathroom kind of thing. Uh -huh. But take take one atom away from THC and you come up with CBD. Yeah, you know, literally that's the difference. It's that close, these two cannabinoids, and they work so much differently. Right. Now, now the person that, that goes out and they're drinking casually – there, this isn't. I'm not talking about how to help an alcoholic along here. I'm talking about how how somebody that goes out to have some casual drinks who doesn't want a, a, a drunk driving charge, and they're being very careful, saying, "Oh, I can only sip this much of my drink. You know, that's all I can have." <laughs> yeah, just you know, getting a slight I, I, buzz. Well, what a person can do is literally have a shot. Take about 10, 15 milligrams of CBD, mm -hmm. maybe 20 after that shot. Guess what's going to happen? What? It's just like nicotine. Alcohol goes through a different process in metabolizing in the body. If you throw CBD on top of that alcohol, guess what happens? Cancels it leaves. It leaves up to 75% earlier. Wow. And I, I'm definitely not trying to give advice to people to avoid a drunken driving charge and go out <laughs> yeah. and drink it up and have a bunch of CBD. But what right. I'm saying is now I move back over to the alcoholic. You know you have a problem. You know – and most alcoholics are like drug addicts, and I should know this because I'm almost 11 months into being opioid-free – and I use this very same interaction that I just talked about nicotine. I'm talking about alcohol now the same way mm -hmm. where alcohol metabolizes about 75% faster when CBD is added to it. That's cool. Which literally means, yeah, it means your blood alcohol level drops. It means chances of a drunk driving charge decrease literally while you're in the holding tank. It would be interesting to take a <laughs> breathalyzer and test this out. You know, like that would be a cool experiment. Like just have someone doing shots, someone next to them, same weight doing shots, and then one's doing CBD and one's not and keep testing the breathalyzer. See see what the readouts are. That would be cool. That, that would be something I would love to do, you know, in a controlled setting, definitely. You know, where we could we could look at not just a breathalyzer, because the thing about a breathalyzer when it comes to somebody getting a drunk driving charge is all they have to do is say, hey, look, take me to the hospital. I want my blood drawn. Mm -hmm. I don't trust your machine. OK, the labs on your blood serum level will outweigh any breathalyzer when you end up in court. So the breathalyzer could literally show you <laughs> at one point two. Right. And then you go into holding but you took CBD. Now the <laughs> CBD is metabolized. You kick right. the alcohol out. I want a blood test. You go in and get a blood test at ER and suddenly you're at 0. 0.6. So <laughs> you're like in the back of the cop car with your handcuffs on, just putting gummies in your mouth, like slipping them out of your sleeve or something. Yeah, exactly. So, so, <laughs> and again, we're not trying to, to fuel people to do bad things. We're just right. saying, look, things interact in different ways, you know? Right. And, and, and how do we apply you know, the interactions between alcohol and tobacco, for example, to other common drugs of dependence that people end up hooked on and have a hard time getting off of. Mike, I think you, you, you're on to something here. They could do, this could be something that all bars have, like a, um, what do they call it, like an aperitif or something? What's the drink after a meal? A digestif? It would be like a, like you just have that little CBD shot at the end of your like alcohol binging experience, a CB digestif, just to take the edge off at the end of the night to try to like kill what was happening in your body. Like try to, you know, cause talk about liver damage with CBD. Oh yeah. You're talking about alcohol, like one of the major liver, liver damages, damagers of, you know, out there. Like, so it's kind of, it, kind of, that's it's a cool, amazing. I, I want like, 
What, where'd you hear this study about the about the alcohol and CBD? Because this is a cool one. I want to read more about that. that. Now, where did I read the, hear this study? This is Mike doing research in my little <laughs> box here, okay? When it comes to CBD to drug interactions, you don't look at this drug, that drug, that drug. You look at alcohol. What digestive enzymes, what family does it use? What pathway does it use? Mm-hmm. So alcohol uses the same pathways and the same enzymes that CBD does. CBD is a hog, a big, big, big hog. Right. It, it's CBD is such a big hog. I mean, let's think about it. THC is a very, very powerful plant constituent. It's one people are afraid of because it's so strong. Right. But you add CBD to, CBD to it and it beats it up <laughs> because it does the same thing. It metabolizes it 75% plus faster than it would normally metabolize. Therefore, you're not high. It gets rid of the high quickly or it doesn't allow the high to completely happen because it's metabolizing the THC out of your system. Okay. So let's apply this to my own 2019. I started out this year on January 26th by completely quitting opioids after 24 years of addiction right. to pharmaceuticals. I'm talking about a brutal, brutal year. I spent much of the year putting together different protocols or trying to with isolated cannabinoids, trying to create different types of, of ratioed uh, concoctions that we could use for drugs that, of dependence. And, you know, I found that whole plant extracts work way, way better than trying to take individual cannabinoids and put them together, uh-huh. you know, you know, but that's all interesting, but we're talking about CBD to drug interactions. Right, right. Well, one thing I found was that when you take CBD along with an opioid, you're not going to get the same half-life. Half-life meaning the amount of time this drug is affected. Right. Normally, it's eight, normally eight hours with an opioid. Take it with CBD, it's probably only going to have efficacy for two to three hours. Oh, wow. Which That means your blood serum starts falling even if you take the same dose. So as I was going through withdrawals and, and creating protocols – uh, you know, this when to take how much of this is basically a protocol mm-hmm. uh, for, for people to also get through their withdrawal and get back into life again after, you know, a long term dependence. You know, it was incredible how I found that CBD, when applied to somebody taking their regular dose of medicine, lowered their blood serum to a point that if somebody that was addicted to, to oxycodone, for example, they're taking 90 milligrams a day. Mm-hmm. And I say, here, take this CBD. I want you to take 50 milligrams in the morning with your dose and 50 milligrams at night with your dose. And let's talk in a month. Just keep taking your dose. Right. And, and people would say, Mike, why are you doing that with an addict? And, and my response would be the number one reason why us addicts don't quit is the fear of withdrawal. And that's not Mike's opinion. This is science, okay? okay? Right, right. This is behavioral science. And, and and I'm the perfect example. I'm somebody that was doling out literally gallons, liters of oil a month in a compassion program, yet I stayed on strong opioids the whole time. Right. You know? Why did I stay on them? Fear of withdrawal. Mm-hmm. So there's a way to take that CBD to drug interaction Give it to somebody who has that fear of withdrawal, and slowly what's going to happen is their blood serum level or their tolerance to the opioid is going to drop. After about a 30-day period of time of using CBD with the drug that they're dependent to, all they have to do is pull the CBD away, and that drug is going to be too strong. Oh, okay. Right. And now you start a natural weaning process because we all know that an addict is only successful – in becoming a recovering addict when they want to recover. So literally by adding that CBD to drug interaction to any dependence, I I don't care if the person's addicted to heroin, meth. I don't care if they're shooting up pills. I don't care what they're doing. If they're addicted to something their dentist gave them, if they had knee surgery, it doesn't matter. The addictions are all the same. And that interaction with CBD to those drugs, lowering that blood serum will work the same and allow people to get away from drugs and dependence. Yeah, are not as extreme as uh, heroin or whatever, but going back to your earlier story, 
our security guard, we we put this in an episode earlier, like uh, maybe 10 episodes ago or more. Uh, our security guard, Joe, was a smoker and he vaped nicotine as well. And he just decided one day I'm going to quit this with CBD. <laughs> like, uh, So he started taking a, like a tincture. Every time he had a craving for a cigarette, he'd take a tincture. And he started you know, taking a lot of tinctures because he kept having cravings. But it got quickly you know, ebbed down to like he didn't even finish the first bottle of CBD. It, by the time he was like, I'm done. I don't need this anymore. Kind of like really weaned himself off of it with willpower and CBD. So it was mm-hmm. kind of cool. Willpower, CBD, and science. Yeah. Okay. And I'll tell you, here's the science right there. Why did that happen for him? Okay. Smoking a cigarette creates a dopamine reward. Okay. And as we smoke cigarettes or use nicotine, what happens is we get more and more and more dopamine receptors. Mm -hmm. And our body wants more and more and more of a reward, which is why you see a cigarette smoker increase their habit over a period of time. Because that same cigarette just doesn't do what it did in the beginning. Yeah, you get a and, tolerance and all that stuff. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I smoked cigarettes for 30 years. And I'm telling you, that first year, those cigarettes were like, oh, this is so beautiful. <laughs> you know? And then after a while, it was like, let me have another one. I'm right. literally lighting one cigarette with another. Oh, I mean, yeah. and, and it's just that, that tolerance that we create. And, and it's a tolerance to our own reward system. Well, CBD itself gives that reward, that same dopamine reward. Mm. So here's this guy saying, okay, I want a cigarette. I got a craving. I'm going to use CBD to stop the craving. So he had that amount of information to know CBD would stop the craving, but he didn't know that the CBD was going to cause the same dopamine reward as the cigarette. The only difference CBD doesn't make dopamine receptors duplicate. People don't realize that when they go and start smoking cigarettes and they pick up that habit, Mm -hmm. you're not going to end up with twice the amount of of dopamine receptors. For example, let's say you have 10 receptors for dopamine, and they're normally up in the front of your head, in the frontal lobe, Uh okay? And you start smoking cigarettes. Within a week, you don't have 50 you have a thousand dopamine oh, receptors. Geez. Within a year, you have ten thousand. So <laughs> these these never go away. But when you quit smoking cigarettes or quit nicotine, it's sort of like a blanket unraveling and falling over those receptors that are no longer needed. Yeah, and the body starts producing its own dopamine. It doesn't need uh, uh, nicotine anymore. So we add CBD to this whole picture, and the body's really happy and says, wow, I'm going to produce a lot of dopamine because I really like this natural item that's coming into my body mm-hmm. yeah. um, instead of the toxin that used to come into my body. Right. You know, so, so literally, you know, there's all kinds of interesting things scientific theories for for why cannabinoid medicine works but like you said earlier uh, when we were talking about alcohol and 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 using the breathalyzer to see how well that works mm-hmm. so much of it just hasn't been proven yet through clinical trials and through different types of study because there really isn't the funding yet right. and there the laws haven't loosened up enough yet, but it's happening. Right. I mean, By all means, we're not advocating like, oh, you just drank half a bottle of whiskey at the bar. I'm going to chug a, a 1,500 milligram CBD and I'll be totally fine to drive. No, don't do, don't do that. No. <laughs> like, I don't even drink. I don't drink. Uh-huh. Jen's mom had celebrated two years sober like six months ago, so she's like two and a half years now. Um, she doesn't drink, so we don't even drink in this house. This seems you like know? this is something that I want to see. I want to see someone make some studies on this because this would be really dope to find out. Like you know, who like M- Mothers Against Drunk Driving or one some of these advocacy groups would love this if it was if it's proven. Then so you you know you, you think. think yeah you think <laughs> so you would think but but why why is there a big push not to allow CBD in an alcoholic beverage right now? Yeah. Okay. On, on one hand, I can see that some have figured out this science already and said, okay, if we allow CBD in alcoholic beverages, people can really drink a lot and they're not going to get drunk. Right. Well, you know, people don't really look at the whole picture a lot when people don't get drunk from alcoholic beverages you no longer have a billion-dollar cash cow for the nation. 
<laughs> you no longer have people going to mandatory drunken driving meetings. You no longer have fines. You no longer have increased insurance costs. So there's a lot of lobbies stepping in saying don't add CBD to alcohol. Now, I, per- I personally don't like it, but why, why should we not? And, and you'd think the alcohol industry would love it because people are just going to have to drink more, drink, buy more drinks. Like every bar and restaurant will be selling twice as much drinks to get someone equally as buzzed uh, because it's counteracting it in a way. You know what I mean? So like that's how they make all their money is selling more drinks. So we would think that all of this would be happening. But, yeah. but one thing that I find is that in the in the cannabis industry, CBD, hemp, whatever you want to call it, it's all the cannabis industry to me. Mm-hmm. Um there's a big rush for everything. And, you know, the Food and Drug Administration takes years to approve any food. Uh, if you are a bologna manufacturer coming up with a new bologna, introducing it to, to the FDA today, uh-huh. you're not going to put it on the shelf next month or six months from now. So what I find is that when I, when I analyze industry itself, there's such a rush to do things that often we see products launched and things done before the proper research and development's done to see how it's going to work. And I, I think that's one of the reasons why the FDA is barking at us all and saying, hey, you, you know, you, you can't put CBD into alcohol in some states. And I mean, when, you, when you think about putting CBD into alcohol, you're talking about, you know, federal entities that mm-hmm. oversee alcohol. So it's no longer a state issue. Right. You know, so, so you know, I, there's just so many different interesting aspects when it comes to CBD to drug interactions that just aren't negative. And I I think people really need to know that instead of being afraid of CBD. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the CBD Source Podcast. What is the worst thing that you've ever eaten, you've ever done for food to get food while you had the munchies? I'd love to know that. Oh, that's a great idea. What What is the craziest munchies you've ever had? What is What is the biggest crave you've ever had and, and the most disgusting thing you might have <laughs> resorted to? Like, uh, there's just nothing left in the fridge. You came upon some weed, didn't expect it, and didn't do that shop ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure you had something uh, stocked and ready to go for that that munchie crave, what did you end up eating? Because that that is an interesting concept. Give us a call one eight three three CBD gang. That's one eight three three CBD gang. Uh, the numbers are two two three four two six four. I want to hear from you. And if you have ever eaten garbage, or I should say food <laughs> out of the garbage while having the munchies or any other crazy story, crazy earth story, or maybe a story that's not as crazy, just give us a call. Did you get so high that you ate your dad's 40-year-old Twinkie collection? <laughs> no, no, I did not do that. And that's probably because I don't eat Twinkies. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably the only reason. <laughs> did you at home get so high that you found your your parents' wedding cake topper in the freezer? Ooh thawed that shit out and munched on it because you just had to have that cake. But if I had one of those spare, <laughs> just, ha- just around, oh, I would. I'd be like, sorry, Mom. That's going to just have to be for next anniversary. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm defrosting it. That'd be tough shit, man, and that thing is gone. Uh, did you eat an entire roll of... Uh, cookie dough. Oh, yeah, just raw cookie dough. Oh, yeah. Definitely, that's, that's something a lot of people probably had. If you went to go make brownies and ate half the batter... Oh, <laughs> I bet that's something someone's done for sure. Or if you are deciding to eat your leftovers that are about a week old and you're not sure if they're still good, give us a call. <laughs> right. Give us a call. What's the number, Tosh? 1-833-CBD-GANG. That's 1-833-CBD-GANG. We're back. With the CBD Source Podcast. Let's just do a little rundown of like some of the drugs that if you are on this drug and it's doing something really important, you should definitely stay stay away from, stay clear from CBD. And then some of the other ones that are more positive. So like, just so, so, so people know, like sure. starting off like, oh, okay, now I know I will not go that heavy on CBD or whatever. Okay. Let's say you need a blood thinner. You just had a heart surgery. You've got stints. 
maybe you had heart surgery a few years ago. You've got stents. Right. You take warfarin. If you take warfarin, do not take CBD at any dose at all. That's my advice. Okay. Because what CBD does with warfarin and blood thinners, it, it, because this, this cannabinoid is interesting in how it works in these digestive paths, um, it will either close the door, and we've talked about a lot of door closing on nicotine, alcohol, mm-hmm. opioids, mm-hmm. on digestion, or it opens that door up so wide it's incredible, and it allows the drug to work way too good. So what we're going to talk about right now are drugs that work way too good <laughs> with CBD. And one of them is warfarin. It's a blood thinner. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know, you've had a heart attack. You've got stents in your heart. You need a blood thinner, right? Right. Well, yeah, but if it starts working five times better than it's supposed to, what's going to happen? Your blood Chances turns into of, water? <laughs> uh, I've had, literally, I've, I have have fielded phone calls and done FaceTime with patients that had blackened eyes, bruising all over their face, that are on warfarin, taking CBD, blotchy bruising all over their body. And, you know, that side effect's minor. That's minor. Okay. What would be major would be a CVA, a brain bleed. So, So, you know, I love cannabinoid medicine. I love THC, CBD, CBN, you name it. Mm-hmm. But if all we do is focus on what good it can do, we're not giving the public due diligence. We're not giving them facts that they can run off of. We're only giving them hype. Right. We're only giving them the positive without giving the full picture. Sure. You know? So when we look at warfarin and CBD, the possibility of having a bleed somewhere in your body is there. So let's move on. And and let's move on to some other drugs that May, that just work too good with CBD. And one of those is transplant medicines. Just about any medication that you take as an anti-rejection medication for a transplant is going to get really bashed by CBD. It oh, generally wow. will – it's going to shorten that half-life again. So the drug only works for a few hours in your body instead of eight like it should. Jeez. Now we're talking – you just had a cornea transplant that goes south. You're blind the rest of your life. Right. You know, right. you just had a liver transplant that goes south. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, last week I worked with a nurse who actually is in the cannabis industry and recently had a liver transplant. She was jaundiced. She couldn't figure out what was going on. Um, just, seriously having issues and it was somebody who was pro cbd not really into thc and after talking to her a little bit we came to a decision that hey you know let's let's cut back the cbd right. and you know and, and then i came out saying look let's cut it off completely how long do you think and, how long would you say that people who have had transplants like should wait before they ever get, is, like for the rest of your life, you can never get do CBD again, or if you need rejection medication. Oh, okay. So as long as you're still you're, taking that medication, I get it. And, and we should keep in mind that these are dose dependent problems. The person takes five milligrams of CBD with a rejection medicine, they're likely going to have zero problem. The person takes five or ten milligrams of their warfarin, likely going to have zero problem. A lot of these CBD to drug interactions that we're getting a lot of information on are based on GW Pharma's crazy dosing of Epidelex. I mean, you've got people taking 1,200, 1,500 milligrams of CBD at one time, Yeah, which is pretty odd because you're trying to use 1,500 milligrams of CBD to do what 50 milligrams of THC can do because it's more politically correct. Well, that's all great, <laughs> but it's you know it's causing some drug interactions that just aren't pretty. Yeah, that's and not good. I, now, I want to move on to the number one issue, I believe, with CBD to drug inter- interactions. And the reason why I believe it's number one is because I'm biased, okay? Mm-hmm. I have epilepsy. Um, Genevieve, you know, our daughter, has epilepsy. Um, and here we go. Since, you know, 2000, late 2013, I've been reading all about GW Pharmaceuticals and all these great things they're doing. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of people know that about a year ago, I published an abstract that really uh, exposed a lot about what's in Epidelex and, you know, it's various interesting ingredients that shouldn't be there, like a strawberry food flavoring, like a ton of sucralose, uh, you know, all kinds of just crazy stuff. So, yeah. but anyway, you know, 
it's near and dear to my heart when it comes to epilepsy and seizures. And the reason why is a lot of people don't realize that seizures kill a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, the last statistic we have is 50,000 people a year perishing to a seizure. That's a lot of people, and you don't hear about this. Okay, so when we talk about CBD to drug interactions that dismantle the ability of an anti-epileptic drug to work, that scares me. Mm -hmm. When I look at GW Pharma's research, I see a dropout rate of over 10%. I see an increased seizure rate of over 10%. That means one in five had a problem with having seizures because of taking this new concoction from Big Pharma. But why did they have the problem? Drug interactions. When you add CBD to certain anti-epileptic drugs, which are called AEDs, or seizure medication, mm -hmm. certain drugs have that same issue as warfarin where CBD doesn't hog up all the enzymes unless instead it, it opens the door for metabolism and makes the drug metabolize so well that blood levels shoot way, way, way up of a seizure medication. So for example, I still take a weaning dose of phenobarbital, a very strong barbiturate used for very severe people. Mm -hmm. It's taken me five years to, degree, to decrease that dose by 20% per year. That's how strong this drug is. Now I'm on the dose that, that normally you would give to a dog that's having seizures, <laughs> okay? Uh -huh. And I weigh over 200 pounds. What's interesting is my blood serum level of phenobarbital is very near what it used to be with five times the dose. And it's because I take CBD every morning with phenobarbital. Wow. You know, so certain drugs, phenos one of them, but it really wasn't highlighted a whole lot because it's not prescribed a lot. Mm -hmm. One drug that's prescribed a ton, it's one of the top line drugs for seizure patients, is called Onfi or Clobazam. Okay, this drug in the D GW Pharma trials caused so many problems that by phase three, if you were on Onfi or Clavazam, you literally weren't even in the trials anymore. Um, what CBD does, and I don't care what I don't care who it is, what brand name that's doing well on the market, or what CBD that you buy somewhere online, if mm -hmm. it's true CBD, it's going to interact with multiple different seizure drugs. Some of them, it's going to increase the blood serum. Some of them, it's going to decrease the blood serum or stop them from metabolizing. Mm. The thing about taking a seizure medication is continuity. You've got to have a continued dose. We take seizure medications on poles, meaning every 12 hours quite often. Mm -hmm. Some are taken every eight, but most are taken on poles. So, and it's done that way so there's a continuity of blood level. For example, if your blood serum level on a seizure medication is 20 right now, and you take something like CBD, and it increases it to 27, and then the CBD wears off and it drops back down to 19, guess what you just did? What? You just provoked a seizure. Oh, geez. <laughs> because, and it, it, what, what a lot of people don't understand is the side effect to most seizure medications is also seizures. <laughs> it's on almost every seizure medication there is. When you look at potential side effects, serious ones, seizure, you know. So, mm -hmm. so this is why Epidolux has an increased seizure warning. It should be expected on any seizure medication. So I'm not going to blame GW Pharma for that, mm -hmm. you know. But but we've got a world of people with epilepsy that are just literally grabbing here, grabbing there, trying to get whatever CBD they can, but they're unaware that it's going to interact with their seizure medications in a very strange way. And it's impossible for me on any tape show like this or in a 25-minute keynote talk or something like that to explain to people the number of different drugs that will interact because it's literally over a thousand. Wow. That's scary because yeah, so that makes that's gonna make people worried about trying C B D for themselves, probably. Well, well, again, it's dose dependent. I don't think people should worry about taking CBD for themselves because we're talking about select populations. Mm. There's a lot of people taking CBD for anxiety, to sleep better, tons of people taking CBD that don't take pharmaceuticals. Right. 
People don't need to worry. Instead, pick up the phone and call your pharmacist. See what they have to say. If your pharmacist doesn't know enough, check with somebody like your literally your community college or your local college. Talk to whoever is the professor of pharmacology. They probably have some aides in that class that are way up there with knowledge. Mm -hmm. What I'm finding is that pharmacy techs are having just as much knowledge as pharmacists for the most part. Hmm. Now, there's some some pharmacists that know all about cannabis, and they're experts on this stuff. They know way more than I do. Okay, <laughs> and but in but California, what I find, in California, in Calif yeah, in like California, in New York. Good luck. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know what? I could be in another state and walk into a pharmacy, and I do this, and just start asking a pharmacy tech something about CBD, mm -hmm. and they can answer the question. But I ask, ask the pharmacist, and they're they're looking in their computer. <laughs> they're doing the same thing I do when I'm checking drug interactions. Right, right. And, I, and, and I'm not Googling, folks. I mean, a lot of people will Google, does CBD interact with this? Well, you're going to get somebody's opinion likely when you do that. Are you going on like well, PubMed or something, like one of those? Well, we, we go a little bit deeper than that. We look at the drug, what metabolic path it uses to digest. You know, so we're literally looking at at what enzymes is it using, what pathways is it using? Does CBD use the same pathway? So, so when we look at at drug interactions, we have to look at look at it that way instead of saying, okay, I'm gonna look at uh, Valium pain meds. I'm gonna look at you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. We have to look at these whole families of drugs and look at how they metabolize in comparison to CBD, because we know if the drug metabolizes using the same exact metabolic pathway, uh, more than likely CBD is going to kick that thing out of the system quite a bit earlier than it should. And we've talked about positives. And, you know, I know you only have so much time here, but <laughs> one huge positive is with chemotherapy. And, you know, I, over the last week, I've been very humbled to work with a group in India after gaining the approval of their government to use, quote, hashish oil mm -hmm. on a patient that has cancer, and the patient is very closely related to somebody who has one of the biggest grows in the world of hemp. So I think it sort of helped them get approval. Uh, but we actually formulated uh, a, a cannabinoid uh, medicine regimen or protocol to go along with their cancer treatment. And it's important to note that while the person got the chemotherapy, they did not use CBD because CBD would have exited that chemotherapy immediately out of the system. Instead, they actually got the chemo treatment using THC to keep them from getting sick from it. But once the chemo treatment's over and they're back home, they start up on CBD. And what that does is speed up the metabolism and get rid of that chemo drug before it starts messing with their skin, making all their hair fall out. And we know that chemotherapy kills a lot of cancer patients. No doctor is going to say that, but I'll say it right now because we all know this fact. You know, cancer kills cancer patients. Chemo kills cancer patients. Uh -huh. So how do we avoid this? Well, we look at these chemotherapy drugs, and they last in the body for two, three weeks at a time. So if the person gets the chemotherapy treatment, lets it run for 72 hours, it's doing its job. It's killing off every last cell it runs into. After, right. after three days, the person starts using CBD, CBG, some other cannabinoids like CBD. And the next thing you know, these chemo drugs are exiting the system instead of staying in there doing a lot of destruction after they've already done their job. Yeah, and I can't say I'm an advocate for chemotherapy. And this is the thing about cannabinoid medicine. We have to keep an open mind. We can't just say, hey, everybody needs cannabis oil. Um, that's going to handle every last cancer patient. Because if we do that, guess what? A lot of people are going to die. Because people come looking for cannabis oil when they're stage four plus. Right. Literally, I mean, they're metastasis all over their body. And now suddenly they want cannabis oil. Well, guess what? Now it's time to use integrative medicine. Now it's time to look at the fact that, hey, chemo may save this person's life. Chemo and radiation together, coupled with cannabinoid medicine to support it and then take over for it, may save this person's life when oil alone on somebody that's stage four plus could be 
devastating. You, you could be helping them lead the world in a nice way. Right, right. I, I mean, I'm a lucky one. I had three different cancers that were stage four, but they were stage four low. That's important to know. So, and then I had the knowledge on how to treat non Hodgkin's, Hodgkin's, and prostate at the same time. Um, if I wouldn't have the knowledge, if I wouldn't have the access, if I, if I wouldn't have known how to apply that cannabinoid medicine to me, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. So it's, I, the last thing I ever want to do is be negative or not 100% positive towards everything that has to do with cannabis and CBD. But I always want to be realistic because I don't believe it helps consumers if all we do is hype things up. We need to give them both sides of the story. Because I don't want people to be afraid of using CBD. I want people to medicate safely. And I think that's a very, very responsible angle for anybody in this industry to take. And if we don't take that angle, guess what? The FDA is going to do it for us. How would someone who has seizures and they're on a medication um, know that CBD might work for them better than their medication? Like if you take it and it tries to cancel it out, like how would you ever make the switch over? Like how do? Well, for example, let's say somebody's on a seizure medication that does just sort of get canceled out by CBD, and we're using some basic words so people can understand. Right. We're not using scientific words here. So, so this person that has epilepsy is having seizures. They're taking seizure medication. So to me right now, we have an obvious situation where that medication's not working. The seizure medication. Mm -hmm. And we, we've talked about how seizure medications all have seizure warnings. Right. So if you're, if you're taking a seizure medication and it's not working, what happens is the doctor gives you another seizure medication. Mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't work. You can, you can be on three or four. I was on five at one time. So a patient that takes CBD with their seizure medication and stops seizing and stops taking their medication, generally what I find is that they lower their dose of CBD after that. And that tells you right there that it was the medicine. Right. It was the pharmaceutical drug increasing seizures. And there's no way to get around this. I mean, we've, we've got doctors, what are they going to do? I mean, with 50,000 people a year dying to epilepsy, you've got doctors saying, okay, Mike, I want to keep you alive. I'm writing another prescription. And I'm going, okay, doctor, I'll take it. You know, And and this happens to so many people until they finally discover cannabis oil or CBD oil. And then that's when the transformation begins and we start to see which medicine was actually causing us the problem and which one works. Uh, you know, I've talked about how I was on 12 medications when I started using oil. This is back in 2013, mm -hmm. and I'm only only two now, okay? And and a lot of people will ask, okay, Mike, which two? Especially if they're in medicine, if they're in healthcare, they want to know which two I'm still taking. Right. And I'll t I will tell you, we've already talked about phenobarbital. I also take Valium. So I take two very old school drugs that uh -huh. doctors don't like to prescribe. Right. Why, why do I take these two old school drugs? Because they are the only two out of the 12 that they were taking that have 60 years worth of research and knowledge on. We know <laughs> the long-term effects of Valium. You will be addicted. We know the long-term effects of phenobarbital. You will be addicted. We also know that both of those drugs have high levels of efficacy. They work for people. Mm -hmm. So so when I looked at all the seizure medication I was on, I had to look at all the synthetic crap, all the newfangled stuff that came out mm -hmm. that doesn't have any longevity to it. Which ones, we did don't, you, which ones did you try that didn't work for you? 27 <laughs> anti-epileptic drugs failed. So we're talking about a very, very long list. Yeah, wow. I mean, when, when, when I started using oils, right away I quit Capra. Capra is a, a strange drug. It works for a while for most people, then it stops working. There's this thing called Keprage, where 15% of users, pretty incredible number, end up going through a rage because of the drug. I had it happen to me. I got to a point in using Capra to where I couldn't even send an email out. I had to put everything into draft and look at it the next day because <laughs> I was getting in trouble sending emails out to attorneys and, and cases I was working on where I, where I was just 
thrashing on him, just mm-hmm. bad. I'm raging in my email. <laughs> so it was that bad. So I quit Kepra right away. You know, um, be- before uh, we before we move on from Kepra, like that's the one that uh, I talked to Anthony Sullivan about this. Since the last time I spoke to you, my girlfriend, who remember I told you she had like she had a stroke, and then she we found out she had cancer on top of that. So she started taking. She started going through chemo and all of that stuff. Um, Well, she went through chemo the first time, and now she's on her second round going through chemo with radiation. And somewhere in there, she when she was going to get a wig fitting, like she got the wig, left, and like in the parking lot where her mom was driving her, had a seizure, a grand mal seizure, which she's never had a seizure in her life. But her brother has has seizures like all the time and is on Keppra. And uh, so she they rushed her to the hospital. She had another seizure in the hospital and she's been on Keppra ever since. And yeah, it's <laughs> like, what 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 do you do there? You know, like I can't you can't talk someone out of it when that's what their whole family is taking. You know what I mean? It's kind of weird. Well- when I, when I hear something like that, it's like, wow. I mean, and Kepper does work for quite a few people. So, I mean, it her does brother have did neck. have the rage. He said he he told me that, like, because he's on a major dose of it. Uh, and he did have that Kepper rage. He didn't understand why. Have you noticed that her personality has changed a little bit since she started using that, yeah, that yeah. medicine? Yeah. Yeah. People become sort of short irritable um <laughs> with with kids what happens is they start tantruming a lot yeah that's they start what anthony, acting out that's what anthony sullivan it, said about his, I, his daughter i've yeah. represented kids in 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 what's called a manifestation hearing uh, in special ed that's where they're literally trying to determine why a child did what they did and whether or not they can actually kick a disabled child out of a school mm. for violating school policy and I can't count the number of times I've, I've actually either been in a manifestation hearing or was getting ready to represent a kid in one who was on Capra and had literally torn their classroom apart. Jeez. I mean, we're not talking once or twice. I'm talking dozens of times. Wow. Literally just start throwing things all over, smashing gloves. I mean, one kid pulled the chalkboard off the wall. Jeez. You know, so we know pharmaceutical drugs have all of these side effects that are horrible. So. Yeah. This is why I tell people, look, when when you listen to me talk about CBD to drug interactions, why should you jump up and down scared? You've been taking pharmaceuticals that do things like I just said, that make little kids rip chalkboards off walls. <laughs> I, mean, right. I mean, if you're going to take a pharmaceutical, for example, an opioid that in a lot of states you have to get Narcan with, so you're taking a pharmaceutical that can kill you. Mm-hmm. you I mean, you shouldn't be that worried about a CBD to drug interaction, <laughs> you know? Right. Unless, unless it's one of these major ones. You're taking a blood thinner, you're taking seizure meds, you know? You're taking transplant meds. Mm-hmm. You know, we, these type of issues are something that we should always talk to our doctor about. And what's happened is, or our pharmacist, but what's happened is people have gotten so excited over the CBD movement and the cannabis movement that they get something that's like, oh, wow, I'm going to take this oil, you know, and, mm-hmm. and caution gets thrown to the wind. But if you gave that same person another bottle of pills and not a bottle of CBD oil, caution wouldn't be thrown to the wind. They'd start questioning their doctor. What's this new prescription here? Why are you giving this to me? What's this going to do with my other medicine? Right. right. These are the questions a patient will ask a doctor when the doctor adds another medicine. But when they get a CBD bottle, they're like, woo, party! You know what I mean? <laughs> so I understand that excitement. And I guess – the biggest message I have to send is while you're excited, remember, we don't throw caution to the wind before we eat something or drink something. When you go to have a soda, you love Coca-Cola, you go have one, you know it's gone through some strict, strict FDA guidelines to even be sold to you. Mm-hmm. When you go to use CBD, you should be aware that everybody's still learning including the FDA. So as patients, we need to be responsible to ourselves. You know, that's the number one thing. You know, as a patient who's survived cancers, who's lived through so many hospitalizations, I can't count for epilepsy. um, I have to look at myself as being responsible. 
I, I spent half of this year blaming doctors for my opioid dependency. Now, doctors wrote these prescriptions and they were careless. I'm talking, I got some serious ugly records where I had fentanyl, oxycodone, and oxycontin mm. all given at the same time for wow. years. Yeah. So, but, but who's ultimately responsible for what they put inside their body? I mean, here's a cup of coffee. It can do damage, right? Right. <laughs> Coffee's not always great for us, but I just drank it. So ultimately, I'm responsible. If coffee did something bad to me, I couldn't say, hey, Folgers is a bad company. <laughs> I'd have to say, no, Mike picked up the cup. My whole life so, is because of Folgers. <laughs> exactly. So there's a point as patients where we have to get responsible. And, and I know that, that sometimes when I send a message, it's pretty aggressive and pretty strong. And the reason it's that way is because I care. Right. You know, and and I, I don't want to see anything bad happen. You know, I want to see the most positive, positive uh, reactions as we can um, from cannabinoid medicine. But we all know that, you know, we're not always going to see that. So the more educated and informed people are, the more safely they can medicate. Very cool. And so anyone listening, don't freak out. Don't freak out if you're <laughs> like a lot of yeah, this is don't. scary. It sounded scary. But like if you listen back to uh, episode 18 when we talked to Mike the first time, you'll hear his whole story about basically how he kind of climbed out of this epileptic life. Do you remember the Can't Eat It All story? So it's like <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people who remember that story, uh, CBD kind of like changed your whole life and that sort of set you on a new path. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up because in September of 2013, I was taking those 12 medications. Okay. And I was taking a lot of CBD. Mm -hmm. So here I am six years later talking to you. It did not kill me. Right. It didn't on 12 hurt me. Big meds, big meds. Too. I, I actually stopped seizing. So it's very, very important to, to really emphasize that these issues that come with CBD to drug interactions are dose related and they were brought to our attention only after GW Pharmaceuticals creation Epidelex was dosed out at 600, 800, 1200 milligrams at a time mm -hmm. to people. Yeah, and then we had crazy. these CBD to drug interactions. Mm -hmm. So we're not talking about somebody that ordered some CBD through the mail that's got 250 milligrams in the whole bottle that's right. using that all. We're not talking about 10 milligrams, 15, or even 50 milligrams at a time. We're talking about hundreds of milligrams at a time causing these problems. We, uh, do you want to save the, the – um the carousel challenge for the love story episode, or do you want to tell me a little bit about that, your Vegas trip and all of that now, or do you think you, you'd tie that into the whole story? No, I can tell you about that now. All right, cool. Let's yeah, hear about it. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if everyone knows about this yet. So let, this is a pretty cool story. Yeah. You know, on Genevieve's birthday on, on August 6th, I decided that her love for carousels had just gone a little bit too far and I needed to do something to help her out. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when Genevieve and I came together, a lot of people um, are aware, but for those that aren't, um, Genevieve was a compassion patient in a compassion program I ran, and it just it was circumstance that led us together. Basically, she just was another child I brought oil to, but she needed some help and special ed, so I became her advocate. Um, her mom and I started talking and eventually started dating, and we became a family which is known as the cannabis love story in one of the which most we'll cover in, we'll cover that in detail coming up soon <laughs> yeah so one of the most intense things about the cannabis love story i guess or the, one of the most intense uh, photos and videos or that come from this uh, story are with me and genevieve on a carousel uh, she loved the carousel and Prior to her mom and I getting together, maybe it was once a year that she would go, but I saw how much she loved it. And, you know, I'd be gone for a couple of weeks uh, running the compassion program, come back and stay for 10 days or two weeks, you know, with the family. And every time I'd come back, we'd take Jen to the carousel. So it just became something we did for her. And then in 2017, towards the end of the year, in Santa Barbara, the carousel closed. Yeah. And 
Genevieve just wouldn't accept it. I had uploaded so many videos of her on her carousel uh, to YouTube that she just started watching those YouTube videos day and night, mm. living on that carousel. I mean, she's literally never left it. It's been over two years since it's been closed. So right. um, it's it's got so intense that she started waking up in the middle of the night um, dreaming that she was on the carousel. We'd have to stay up with her for hours at a time, calming her down, letting her know your horses have moved, they've gone <laughs> bye bye, right. you know, and we'll go see some again sometime, and and, and then talking her through it. You know, how old is she? Look, how old is she? Just to, just to set the table for people listening, like how old is she and how and what are her conditions? That she's she's sixteen years old now. Uh-huh. Um, She's got severe refractory epilepsy, or I'm sorry, severe intractable epilepsy and severe autism. Mm -hmm. She's also diagnosed with severe OCD. Um, she's 100% pharmaceutical free now and uses nothing but cannabis oils. Wow. Um, so, so Genevieve has just made incredible leaps and bounds in development, but regardless of all kinds of development, um, and I think this is part of it. It's that carousel memory that she just wouldn't let go of. Um, it got to the point to where not once but twice we've taken her down to where the Santa Barbara carousel was and have shown her, you know, the horses are gone. Mm. The, the building is empty now. You can look through the glass windows and see. That's heartbreaking. And, oh, I've got videos of it. It's really heartbreaking. Yeah. You know, her hand on the glass and little eyes oh. looking through and there's no carousel there. And, and so, you know, on her birthday, I just decided, you know, we've gone through years of not sleeping through the night. Um, Genevieve wants this thing so bad, and nothing I do seems to help, whether I order a big painting, whether friends send over carousel statues. Nothing is going to work like a carousel is. So I started the carousel challenge uh -huh. thinking, okay, I'm just going to start this website and start a challenge for people to go on carousel rides. It's <laughs> the hashtag. Right. Maybe they'll go on Instagram, you know, and start hashtagging carousel challenge and, you know, then we'll put a GoFundMe and they'll donate. I mean, we can get a couple million dollars and buy a carousel. <laughs> Talk about some grandiose things for a dad to do <laughs> on his disabled daughter's birthday. So everybody's like, Mike, this, this is neat and nice and all that. So the next thing you know, a few hundred bucks comes in. People like it. So my friends go, Mike, I'd like this for Genevieve. Let me help out. What do you need? And I'm like, I, I need to file a nonprofit. So funds came. We are now a 501c3, Carousel nice. Challenge Incorporated. Genevieve, who's got severe autism and epilepsy, is the vice president of that corporation. <laughs> That's very cool. <laughs> and, and, you know, we've got, a, we've got an Instagram page at Carousel Challenge. And, you know, there's a few hundred followers on it. There's several hundred photos that have been given to us by people all over the world. I'm talking South Africa, wow. London, Paris, you name it. I mean, from New York to Florida to California, people are taking carousel rides for this challenge. Now, we're not raising funds yet. We're just we're just raising awareness mm -hmm. to try to. So we 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 decide, hey, look, you know, um, since I'm speaking in, in Vegas in late November, maybe the family should take a little trip and we can all go there, you know, together and take a ride on the Circus Circus Carousel. Yeah. So it starts like that. And then the next thing you know, I'm, I'm talking to a business partner, telling him about it. And he's like, look, I'll, I'll rent a car. I'll come down and pick you guys up since neither one of you drive. And I'll drive you guys to Vegas. And I'm like, okay, this is getting huge. If we're going <laughs> – to do all this, we might as well invite some people to come to Circus Circus with us. Next thing you know, I'm on the phone talking to a Circus Cir Circus event manager, and she's like, well, if you want to do something related to a disability, we can give you the carousel for a couple hours all to yourself before the park opens. Wow. And I was like, wow, well, Genevieve's got autism. They're like, well, that's great. Then it's an autism awareness carousel challenge event. So suddenly we had the Circus Circus Autism Awareness Carousel Challenge event lined up on the morning and night of the first day of the CBDIO. That's so then cool. We picked, 
Yeah, then we pick up CBDIO as a sponsor. We pick up Las Vegas Medical Marijuana Association as a sponsor. We sponsored it from the Global Cannabinoid Research Center. And we end up with a full carousel on November 22nd from 9 to 11 a.m. for two hours. That carousel was packed with kids and adults who came to the first annual carousel challenge held at Circus Circus. And it was just incredible to see this dream, my daughter's dream, come to fruition because (laughs) people cared that much about a little girl and yeah, she's going to be 17 in August, but right. okay, she's a little girl yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and what she loves and cares about, I'm telling you, it's hard for me to hold back tears right yeah, now. Yeah, you're giving because, me like compassionate goosebumps here. <laughs> it's hard because, it, is, man, all, all I want is for Jen to be happy. Right. So, so we set these carousel challenge events. We got Mike Tyson to attention. He didn't show up, but some of the people from his Redwood Cultivation did. How cool is uh, that? You know, Iron Mike. It, but the coolest thing about it was not Iron Mike. <laughs> but the coolest thing about it was a place called Opportunity Village in Las Vegas. I mean, this is a place that David Copperfield adorns and, and all kinds of stars just love. It's a place where a where people with disabilities that are Genevieve's age and older are given the opportunity to thrive. Everything they have five different campuses where 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 kids like Genevieve who become adults actually work, they, where they actually earn a paycheck, where they learn to be proud of themselves and, and become an integrated part of the community. They have this thing called the Magical Forest. Uh, I think it's called the Enchanted Forest. I, can't, I don't even remember the name, but all I know <laughs> is this beautiful carousel and then some other little rides there uh-huh. and it's fully manned by adult individuals with developmental disabilities wow that's cool so so the carousel challenge vegas events were so intense and most people that did see them saw the circus circus stuff go on mm-hmm. but what they didn't see was a private ride that we had sunday before we went home at opportunity village where it just was so awesome. It's so awesome. Adults with Down syndrome, autism, Tourette's sat and explained to us how this place worked. And a gal came in on her day off and operated that carousel so we could go on a private carousel ride at Opportunity Village. And they loaded it up with all of their, quote, ambassadors that work there, or some of them that showed up that day. And Genevieve and all of us took a private carousel ride with other individuals that are adults just like her that have gotten this opportunity at Opportunity Village to grow and expand. And I have to add something to this, Cole, because I'm so excited about it. Yeah. I did a two-hour phone call this morning with the executive director of Opportunity Village and we'll be headed up there in January for a meeting, a tour, and talks of creating Opportunity Village, Southern California. Oh, snap. That is awesome. And I'll tell you what, because I'm telling you, this place was so impressive. If we can't duplicate it in some way here in, in Southern California, we're going to be in Nevada in four or five years. I mean, it just was that impressive. Right. Wow. I'm so, so happy for you guys. I'm so happy for your family. So, That's amazing. Yeah. I really got off the subject because we were talking about no, the carousel. No, no, this challenge. is great. But, hey, listen, th- what, what I was thinking when you were telling love. all these events that that are leading up to something great, I, I was thinking, hey, Netflix, if you're listening to this, this is a documentary that I want to see. And I'm if I want to see it, a lot of people want to see it. I want to see this thing play out. So Netflix should have a crew following you guys on these uh, adventures because I want to see how this progresses and I want to see the finality of it. And uh, it, it sounds like it's already heading there. It's like time to get a film crew in on this now. You know, like this is pretty, pretty fantastic. What's what you're doing for, you know, your family and and uh, you're empowering kids all over the world. Probably it, it's so simple. If you want to be part of this carousel challenge, everyone's been on a carousel 
everyone takes pictures on carousels. Just throw a picture up on Instagram, you know, throw the hashtag carousel challenge on there. They'll share it on their page. Now you're part of this big growing movement. You know, uh, it's really, really cool what you're doing with this uh, for Genevieve. And, uh, and I want to see a documentary about it. So whoever out there, Hulu, you know, like Amazon Prime, whoever has, is looking for this type of a project to make a documentary about, if you're a documentary filmmaker, Jump on this, man. Can you give us some some of your details just so people can get in touch with you, like uh, you know your blog and all of that stuff, so people can uh, reach out to you, Mike? My, pers- my personal blog is at mikesmedicines.com. Um, so if you go check out mikesmedicines.com, you'll find links over to other things I do, over to the Global Cannabinoid Research Center. You'll find a link in the menu that brings you right over to the Carousel Challenge. Uh, we have a website www.carouselchallenge.com that explains all of this, what we're doing right now. Mm-hmm. And um, we'd love, I would love to have a documentary How filmmaker that was really, serious. You to, deserve to it because this. this is so cool. Your life story is insanely cool. And the way everything's heading now, it's just like, man, I want to see that played out on, you know, on Netflix <laughs> or like, I would love to see it, see it on the big I, what, screen. What, you know, and, and what what I want more than anything else is for all these people who are watching the whole cannabis and CBD revolution, that are watching it and saying, "Wow, will will that work for for my little Johnny or Timmy? Yeah, will that work for my child? Will that work for my grandpa, my uncle, my aunt, my brother, my sister? Yeah. What what I want out of all of this is for people to get better. For people to see that there are plant-based alternative medicine options because the carousel challenge would never be happening Mm -hmm. if it was not for cannabis medicine. It would not be happening if it wasn't for CBD because I stopped seizing with CBD and I would have never even gone down this path without that. Right. So – so when we look at, 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 at the cannabis love story, we look at the carousel challenge, I look at these as very unique stories that fit into the cannabis industry in a super, super unicorn-like unique way mm-hmm. and bring people towards, gravitate people towards medicinal cannabis without them really even wanting to be gravitated right. towards it because – once you start looking at the carousel challenge and you go look at it on Instagram, for example, it's beautiful. It's all these videos and mm-hmm. pictures, all these happy people on carousels. There's 70 year old people. There's 12 year old people, <laughs> you know, and, and, and you look at all this and it's like, wow. And nothing about it is cannabis at all. Right. But when you start digging into the carousel challenge.com website, you slowly start seeing some hyperlinks that bring you over to stories about Genevieve. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just a beautiful thing. And I sure hope your pitch to all those documentary (laughs) filmmakers works out because I would love to have that done. It's just something I've never gone out after. Yeah, man. We'll see. Who who knows? I I think that it would be very cool. Mike, it's been great having you on again. I can't wait to have you on again pretty soon. I want to do, you have this cannabis love story. That's like, just got this big write up in high times. And uh, I want to do like a real full coverage of that cannabis love story. Maybe we'll do it for our uh, Valentine's episode or something. Cause I think it needs to be told in like a long form podcast with, you know, all the players. I think it'd be really fun. So um, it's been, it's been great having you, Mike Robinson. Thanks for coming back. Uh, thanks for coming on the show again, man. It's, and uh I'm sorry that we, 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 I didn't personally make it to CBD IO to see your speech. We're going to Vegas this week actually when people are listening to this i will be in vegas uh vegas baby at uh <laughs> at mj bizcon walking around and talking to people so thanks for coming on right before you know our our jetting out of here but uh thanks so much man well thank you so much for having me call i really appreciate it uh it gives me an opportunity to educate some people a little bit so You can be a little bit careful. The bottom line of it is 80% of people using CBD are not even using pharmaceutical drugs. So so this this issue applies to a very select audience. Right. And I really appreciate having the opportunity to address that that select audience. Thanks so much, man. All right. Thank you. Gang's all here. 
the CBD gang. Give the show a call at 1-833-223-4264. That's 1-833-CBD-GANG. Well, gang, that was a great show. Mike is such a pleasure to talk to. I'm so glad we got to hear about um, his latest adventures with the hashtag carousel challenge. And he's got some crazy stuff in the works with uh, nanables and and these clinical trials that he's advising on. He's really uh, getting out there and doing a lot of big stuff. So look forward to see what's happening with him in the near future. Uh, we're definitely going to try to get back in touch with him and Anne Marie, his fiance, for our Valentine's Day show. I know he's got an amazing cannabis love story that High Times did a whole feature on. And we'll be covering that for February 14th. So make sure to swing back for that. Great guy and a very cool family. He's uh, He hasn't lived the easiest life, but man, he is turning lemons into lemonade over there. As always, stick around till after the credits for some bonus material. Mike Robinson talks about his trip to the top of the smoke bus at CBDIO that Danny was just telling us about. And the videos he shot. Here's a little clip. And I'm acting like a stoner in there. We're all smoking hemp. <laughs> We're all smoking hemp, man. That's and- cool. So stay tuned to the end of the credits to hear the rest of that. And, you know, wrapping this up, I just want to give a shout out to Carol Spinney, the man behind Big Bird and Oscar the Grouch died this week. And I'm sure, like you, Sesame Street played a huge part of my childhood. Probably learned most of the alphabet colors and all of that stuff as well as living together in a very mixed environment city, seeing monsters and people of all races interacting and uh, learning together. Sesame Street really changed a lot of people's lives, and Carol Spinney, for 50 years, played a huge part in that. So we thank you, Carol. A few months ago, I had shared something on Facebook that Carol had posted, and a day or two later, I got a friend request from Carol Spinney, And I screen grabbed that and shared it and said, all of my childhood is now validated. Big Bird wants to be my friend. So I'm very sad that um, Carol's passed on, but you'll live on in Oscar and Big Bird in the hearts and minds of generations to come of children. So congratulations on creating something amazing. He lives on. Rest in power, fam. So, gang, next episode, we're going to try to start throwing some of this Vegas content in there when we get back. And I'll CBD you next Wednesday. Give the show a call at 1-833-223-4264. That's 1-833-CBD-GANG. The CBD Source Podcast is written, produced, and hosted by Cole Chaney. Graphic design, photo, and artwork by Ryan Weber, Johnny D, Kevin Bierfeldt, Steve, and Cole Chaney. Marketing by Penny Spinazzola. Special thanks to our resident CBD guru, Akas Patel, our CBD source vape lounge expert, Anthony Maltese, our C body fitness instructor, Danny, our personal cannabidiet CBD chef, Ryan Weber, our CBD news co host and vocal artist, Tasha Miller and our CBD gang subreddit mod, social media maven and wrap-up girl Cass. That's me. Additional thanks to Caitlin, Liz, Ryan, and Kevin for lending your vocal talent. Want to be a guest on the show? Or do you have a great weed man van story? Or a story about your craziest experience with the munchies? Call us at 1-833-CBD-GANG. Again, that's 1-833-223-4264. And leave a message. If we like your story, we might play it on the show. Visit us on cbdsourcepodcast.com for all your links to social media, YouTube, and our message board, r slash cbdgang on Reddit. Be sure to subscribe to the show on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you next week. Awesome Missions Podcast, most related social media.
media pages and interactions are for informational purposes only. The CBD Source podcast does not offer medical advice. Its host, Cole Chaney, is not a medical professional. His experiences with cannabidiol and other cannabinoids are his own and may not affect you the same way. Everybody's endocannabinoid system is different. The statements made regarding CBD products have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. The efficacy of these products and the testimonials made have not been confirmed by FDA-approved research. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. All information presented here is not meant as a substitute for or alternative to information from healthcare practitioners. Please consult your healthcare professional about potential interactions or other possible complications before using any product. The Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act requires this notice. Do you like or want to try quality, third-party tested CBD? Do you live in the New York, Pennsylvania area? We got you covered, gang. We're growing more each month, so check in with cbdsourcecenter.com to find our addresses and new store locations. While you're there, sign up for our mailing list. We're adding new stores across New York and Pennsylvania all the time. We may soon be expanding to a town near you. Hey gang, want to score free CBD? Sign up for Loyal and Save Online or on your phone and use it whenever you shop at CBD Source locations. You'll earn points towards free products and other cool merch. Sign up for free at cbdsourcepodcast.com slash loyal. You can download the Loyal and Save app on iTunes or Google Play. That's our loyalty app. Call Help Designed It. <laughs> CBD gang, we're looking for your weed man van stories. The typical weed man in van has many faces. Space cowboy. Roach. Filthy Frank. Many names. Gary Van Dam, Creepy Casper, Tired Tanner, and many different types of vans. But everybody has met him, and everybody has a story. What Spliff Lord turns you to the dank side? We want to hear about your first experience with the wacky weed, the ganja, Miss Mary Jane. You know, trees, trees, trees. Give the show a call at 1-833-CBD-GANG. Tell us your story in three minutes or less, and we might play it on the show. Hell, one day we might animate it for our YouTube page. Yowza, it's dank AF in here. Someone's smoking the good stuff in the studio. We'll spray some Ozium and be right back with more of the CBD Source podcast. How was CBDIO? How was your, what was your experience besides actually speaking at it? How was the, the whole event? Because it just so happened. I had a blast. I had a blast. I mean, there was a party bus parked in the middle of it. I don't know if you saw the video I did on that. No, I haven't seen it. Oh my god, it's hilarious, I'll check dude, it man. I mean, it's 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 up on one of the Instagram channels. Where I'll say it, dude, it's hilarious, man. I'm I do like an uh, one and a half minute video in the party bus. Oh, that's cool. And I'm acting like a stoner in there. We're all smoking <laughs> hemp. We're all smoking hemp, man. That's and, cool. Our C body with Danny, uh, the host of C body, Danny herself was at CBDIO, and she told us about that bus and stuff. It's pretty cool. She didn't go on it, but she saw it. Just didn't. Yeah, I was in and out of it a lot. Just <laughs> is that fun, the only place know? that they let you smoke? Was that the only oh, smoke? Everybody, people were just smoking everywhere. But, <laughs> In the party bus, though, what was funny is I do a video that's a minute and a half long uh-huh. where, we're, where we're smoking hemp. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm hitting this stuff and blowing out big old hits. And I'm like, damn, this hemp's strong. <laughs> smells good, too. <laughs> and then I, I turn the video off. The guy leans over. How did you like that Blackberry Kush? <laughs> And I was like, my eye, and you can see, in the video, my eyes are going, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you just got dosed. Well, one guy's sending me over a pre-roll that's hemp, and uh-huh. another guy, I'm, I'm hitting off his, and it's like, this day's really good for hemp. Uh. <laughs> but, you know, I'll tell you, I was surprised at some of those hemp buds and how good they smelled and taste. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, they're, they're getting really good with it. The gang's all here. The CBD gang. I don't want to scare people. Right. Um, but but we just want to scare them a little. A little bit. And yeah. then balance it. You, you know what to do. Right. You know <laughs> what I mean? Just, just play with stuff. Balance, balance, balance. Uh-huh. You know? Hey, guys, when you're trying CBD, start low and remember to titrate up. You heard it from the CBD Source podcast. Does that work? Perfect. Thank you so much. No worries. Is that you got the audio good on that? Yes. Yeah. Thank you for listening to the CBD Source Podcast. This is how we CB do it.